John Lee, the man they could not and should not have hung. John Babacombe Lee was sentenced to death and his execution was organised and carried out, except the last breath of a murderer could not be finalised. He was deemed to be the man that could not be hung or should not be hung. Three times they tried to hang Lee and three times they failed. John was accused of killing a Miss Emma Ann Whitehead. She lived with her servants Jane and Eliza Neck, Elizabeth Harris, the cook, and her half-brother, John Henry George Lee. He allegedly snuck into her home in the early hours of November the 15th, 1884, in the hamlet of Babacombe, Devon. He killed her and then burnt her body. Despite considerable damage to her body, it was still evident that her throat had been slit. He had left school to join the Navy, but he was deemed unfit to serve, so was forced to quit. Leaving the military led him on a dishevelled and shady past as a thief while working in Torquay as a footman. He went to prison and upon being released, he went to work at the Glen. He was the only male home at the time of the murder and he had a cut on his arm that he could not explain. John denied the accusations and claimed to be innocent but the circumstantial evidence against him was still used to convict him and he was sentenced to death. He was sentenced to be killed by hanging on the 23rd of February 1885 at Exeter Prison. They tried to hang him on three occasions, but each attempt failed, so he was sentenced to penal servitude instead. It is unknown why his execution did not work the trap door did not open despite being tested many times by the executioner. After three attempts, the Home Secretary changed his sentence to penal servitude, stating that it would shock the feeling of anyone if a man had twice to pay the pangs of imminent death. After 22 years of service, he was released. Another suspect had been brought into the limelight since John's trial, and that is of a man called Reginald Gwyn Templar who was a frequent visitor to the Glen and represented Lee in court as his lawyer. John stated that Templar was in the house at the time of the murder. It was this suspect that reached out to John to serve as his solicitor, which was very odd behaviour. Templar was friends with the victim, so to want to represent her murderer only the day after the murder seems peculiar. Templar only represented John for a short time during the trial. He was deemed to be insane. He blathered about murder while on his deathbed and he died shortly after. The evidence against both suspects was circumstantial and should not have been used to condemn either of them. It is certainly possible that Lee spent some time out of the country, but it is also rumoured he survived the Blitz in London, his fourth escape from death. It is also possible that he ended his days in a South West workshop. A death certificate was found for John Lee, who was a painter and journeyman who died of mycardinal degeneration. He was buried in an unmarked grave, which is rather sad end to a man who was sentenced to death and hard labour for a murder that he may not have even committed. His grave may be unmarked and long forgotten, but the story of John Babacombe Lee will long live on as the man that they could not hang. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.